So we are going to prove two basic properties of cosets. Suppose that H is a subgroup of some group G. Then a coset AH is equal to the set of elements of the form A times H for every H in that subgroup. We're going to first show that for two cosets AH and BH, either they don't intersect at all or they are equal. In order to do that, let's suppose that we have two cosets that intersect at at least one element. And we'll show that that means they must be equal to each other. So if we have AH and BH intersecting at at least one element, then we know that means that there's going to be some AH1, some element of this coset, that's equal to BH2 that's in our second coset. If we start from here, we can multiply by H1 inverse on the right side, and we'll get A times H1, H1 inverse, just becomes the identity. Over here, we'll have B, H2, H1 inverse. Now remember that every element in the coset AH can be written as A times H for some H in the subgroup. So if we have this equation here, what happens if we right multiply some arbitrary element H? We'll get a times h equals b h2 h1 inverse times h. But h is a subgroup, which means it's closed under multiplication. So this right here, h2 h1 inverse h, this is an element of the subgroup. This is of the form bh for some h in h, which means that this entire thing, b times h, this is going to be in the subgroup. So for every element that looks like this, for every AH in our coset, we also have that this exact same thing is in BH. Every element of the first coset is also in the second coset because it looks like this. And therefore, AH must be a subset of BH because BH contains everything in AH. Now notice that the process we did here was not specific to A or B. We started by multiplying by H1 inverse. If we'd instead multiplied by H2 inverse, then we would have gotten A H1 H2 inverse equals B. And then we can do the exact same thing that we did here. BH equals A times this thing, which is also an H. And therefore we get by the same process, BH is a subset of AH. And the only way for two sets to be both subsets of each other is if they are the same. So AH must equal BH. And we derived that just from this intersection at a single element. Because this H2, H1 inverse, it gives us a bridge between the two cosets, AH and BH. And then we can get every single element that we want. So they are both subsets of each other. Next, we want to show that every single coset AH has a size equal to the size of that original subgroup H. Now, notice that the way we construct a coset is by taking every element of the subgroup and multiplying it by A. So naturally, we'd expect that the number of elements in here is going to be the same as the number of H's that we use to create the coset, which is the size of H. There's one other thing that we have to check, which is are there any repeat elements? So is it possible to have A times H1 equal A times H2? Well, we know for a group every element has an inverse. So if we multiply by A inverse on the left side here, what we're going to get is H1 equals H2. So there aren't any repeat elements, because the only way for us to get the same value is if we start with the same group element. So each of these AHs is going to be unique, and therefore, every single coset is going to have size equal to the number of AHs, which is the size of H. One consequence of that is that every single coset will have the same size.